Zero and lift off. Status check to proceed with terminal count. Atlas systems. Propulsion. Go. Hydraulics. Go. Pneumatics. Go. Hello 2. Go. Water. Go. Centaur systems. Propulsion. Go. Pneumatics. Go. Hello 2. Go. LH2. Go. Asgas. Go. Electrical system. Airborne. Go. Ground. Go. Facility. Go. RFFTS. Go. Flight control. Go. Instrumentation. Go. Com. Go. GCQ. Go. Umbilicals. Go. ECS. Go. Red line monitor. Go. Quality. Go. OSM. Go. ULA safety officer. Go. Range, weather, and clear to proceed. Go. You've worked for years. Some of us have worked for five, six years to get to this point. And it always seemed like it was so far away, so far away. It was never really going to come. And what's amazing, when we came down here in June, it still seemed like it was a long way away. July, August, September comes and goes. and. Now you realize, wow, the number of weeks are you can count on one hand. See, I've had the privilege of working with the Mars Science Laboratory mission for the past three years, and I will dare say it's probably one of the coolest missions that I've worked on. Uh, not just because of the science objectives, but the scale of the rover itself, uh, the challenges that the team has gone through uh, to try to meet the science objectives, to make sure that the payloads and the instruments operate as they should. Uh, the launch vehicle that we're using, the Atlas V 541, this is the first flight of a 541 launch vehicle. Uh, what we do is we roll out the rocket from the vertical integration facility out to the launch pad. We use what's called a clean launch pad approach and we do that um, two days before the launch. At that point we connect the rocket and the mobile launch platform to the, uh, to the launch pad, and that's how we're able to uh, load our um, liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen on board, and actually made up the electrical connectors that have to power up the uh, rocket and the spacecraft uh, while it's at the pad. Certainly we're confident in our systems now, but we keep checking them. Uh, we, we have continuous and a series of predefined tests that we do to make sure that the launch vehicle is, is uh, communicating correctly with, with the spacecraft. There's a million operating components there and they all need to work all simultaneously. You don't want any glitches when you get down to just a week before launch. The planets align only every two years and you only get about a three week window. So if you're not ready to launch, the uh, planets move out of alignment and you're waiting another two years. So it's very critical that we don't have anything that would delay our schedule and make us miss the launch opportunity. Launch day, uh, the weather doesn't look too bad. Uh, there is a front that's pushing through. It looks like Wednesday night, uh, Thanksgiving day, it should be pushed south of us, or at least south of central Florida. A bit breezy for roll on Friday, but we should have, should have decent weather. Maybe a threat of an isolated shower coming in with a brisk onshore float. And that looks similar to Saturday. It looks like the winds decrease just a little bit on Saturday, but anytime we're that breezy with easterly flow, uh, would expect to see some kind of clouds coming in from the Atlantic with the threat of an isolated shower. So that's the principal concern it looks like right now. LC, this is the LD on channel one. LC, you have permission to launch. Roger, proceeding with the count. T minus 10, 9, 8. One. confident that she's going to go and she's going to be successful? Absolutely. It's going to go and she'll be good. Right on.